Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this video, we're going to solve this lovely algebra equation right here. The objective is to solve for x. Now, I'm saying that many of you are going to get this wrong because you uh, don't quite understand one specific step in this problem. Uh, I suspect many of you have kind of the general idea. A lot of you, um, I think, will get this right, but a lot of you are going to be close but not have the actual answer. So I'm going to explain this critical step, which uh, throws off a lot of math students when they're solving algebra equations like the following. But uh, before I do that, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. This uh, particular equation shouldn't take you too long uh, to solve. Feel free to use a calculator if you think that'll help you out. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description uh, below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so we have 21 over x plus 1 is equal to 7 over 2. Again, the objective here is to solve for x. So what is x equal to? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now, and you can see it. Uh, plain as day, there it is. x is equal to 5. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, this is fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars, you can tell your friends and family that indeed you know how to solve a basic algebraic proportion. Okay, so this is the type of equation we're dealing with. Now, technically, you wouldn't, uh, you don't have to classify this as a proportion, but I want you to understand that this is a proportion. I'm going to talk about uh, proportions more in a second, but that's not the step that was critical, okay, that will throw a lot of students off here, okay? There is a particular thing in algebra that uh, a lot of students kind of misunderstand, right? So I'm talking about this mystery uh, step, and I'm going to go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so here again is our problem. We have 21 over x plus 1 is equal to 7 halves. Now, I'm saying that this is a proportion. Now, why is this a proportion? Well, if we look here, we have a fraction bar and a fraction bar. Effectively, this is an equation where we have one fraction, this is a fraction effectively, is equal to another fraction. Anytime in mathematics you see one fraction equal to another fraction, you're dealing with something called a proportion, okay? And when you have a proportion, you can use a particular technique to solve proportion equations, which is very, very easy. Now, here you could also, um, look at this as what we call a rational equation, and you can solve it uh, you know, um, in that kind of manner as well. But I want you to recognize the value of seeing a proportion because when you see a proportion, you could do a lot of cool things to solve proportion problems. But basically, all you need to know is one main property uh, to solve a proportion. So let's go ahead and take a look at a proportion. So a proportion, again, is two equal fractions. All right, it's one fraction equal to another fraction. And here is an example of a proportion. Okay, so we have a, uh, one fraction here is equal to exactly one of the fraction here. So you can see one half is the same as the fraction four over eight or three over six or 10 over 20. There's infinite many um, you know, variations of this. But effectively, if you look back at the problem, we're stating that, hey, we got one fraction and it's equal to this fraction right here, right? So if you kind of look at the numerator, we have seven and here this is 21. You might be saying to yourself, wow, it looks like this was multiplied maybe by three. So do I have to multiply this two by three? If you kind of think in those terms, that's actually pretty good. Uh, way to be thinking, but let's go ahead and make this super easy on ourselves right here. So again, we have a proportion, right? One fraction equal to another fraction. What do you need to know in order to solve a proportion problem? Well, the best way to solve a proportion problem is using something called the cross product, right? And we're going to write this out here, the cross product. And hopefully you know what the cross product is. It's effectively multiplying a cr uh, cross like so crosswise right and it's a product i.e we're talking about multiplication so here the cross product will always be true uh, when you have a proportion so for example two times four let's write that right here two times four will be equal to this is a cross 
product right here is going to be equal to this cross product, which of course is 1 times 8. And we can see very clearly that 2 times 4 is 8 and 1 times 8 is 8. That is a true statement. So the way we can use the cross product is let's suppose we had a um, problem, an algebra problem. Let me go and erase this right here. And let's throw in a variable, right? So this looks kind of, it doesn't look too intimidating, but you know, you see this, you got one half is equal to uh, x over eight. You can just kind of reason through this and be like, oh, well, if this is one half and what is the uh, numerator here, if this is eight, you could probably just, you know, by common sense, uh, see that the answer is gonna be four. But what you wanna do is use the cross product. So you got two times x is 2x is equal to 1 times 8, which of course is 8. Now I can solve this nice basic algebra equation, divide both sides of the equation by 2, and again, x is equal to 4. Okay, so this is going to be 4, which we knew it uh, was, or 4 over 8 is the same thing as 1 half. Okay, so hopefully you have a pretty good understanding of the cross product, and if you didn't, uh, now you do. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at our problem right now. Okay, so I said this is a proportion, right? And so you're saying, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you taught me to use the cross product, so let's go ahead and uh, use it to solve for x. So we're going to take this 7 and multiply crosswise by x plus 1 and 21 times 2, right? Makes sense to me. Looks like this is uh, an you know, illustration of the cross product. So let's go ahead and figure this out. So here we're going to have 7... Uh, times, this 7 times x plus 1, right? You can see that work. I already did it. 21 times 2, all right, looks good to me. And so now let's just work through the rest of the problem. And I have 7 times x, 7x, plus 1 is equal to 42. Subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. I'm going to get 7x is equal to 41. And then to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 7. Now, if some of you out there got this as your answer, uh, you know what? You were very close, all right? So I'm going to give you a kind of like a uh, little happy face. We won't give you an A, but I think I'll give you like at least a B plus because you're on the right track, okay? But you made a critical, critical error here, okay? So what was that error, all right? Well, it occurred right here, okay? This is a no-no. You cannot do this in algebra. Well, you can do this, but this is wrong, okay? So let me kind of um, highlight the way to get this right. And sometimes problems, uh, you know, like this, okay, for example, you'll see this on a, a test, exam, homework, whatnot. The teacher or the textbook or whoever is not going to do you the favor of putting parentheses around expressions that have uh, like a variable in them, like x plus 1 or y minus 2. So anytime you see sums or differences in algebra, you need to, if, there, if uh, the expression doesn't already have it, you need to put in those parentheses, okay? That is a group. And oftentimes, they're not written that way. Now, this makes all the difference in the world. Let's go ahead and see how this is done correctly. So here, if uh, some of you, you know, if I had the problem written with parentheses, you easier, uh, would be easier to recognize, okay, I'm going to take this 7 and multiply by this uh, sum of x plus 1. And then I got 21 times 2, and let's see what happens now. Okay, so here we have 7 times uh, the sum x plus 1, but now we, used, uh, we need to use the distributor property. Take that 7, multiply it by x, and 7 times 1, so that's 7, right? So this is 21 times 2, 42. And now let's go ahead and work the problem. I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides of the equation. I get 7x is equal to 35. Then to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 7, 35 divided by 7 is 5. Okay, so this is the main step that uh, oftentimes trips students up. Let's go back up here real quick, though, and kind of just look at this proportion. Let's see if this uh, makes sense to us, right? So we have x is equal to 5. Let's do a little kind of extra thinking here. So we can see that this fraction is the same as this fraction, right? Proportion. So if the uh, if these fractions are the same, that means the numerators, okay, um, kind of have the same proportion, right? So I have a 7, and I'm going to 21. So this was multiplied. To go from a 7 to a 21, that had to be multiplied by 3, right? So here, for the, this 2 to be the same as this, 
it would also have to be multiplied by 3. So let's take that 2 and multiply it by 3. So we're going to get x plus 1 over here, and 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, now, uh, you know, by doing that, we can see that we can solve this equation here, and our answer will be x is equal to 5, right? So the only reason I bring this up is that there are other properties of proportions. As a matter of fact, there's quite a few cool and interesting uh, uh, proportion properties that typically you'll learn more about this in like geometry. Um, and uh, that's a whole other story in and of itself. But if you need help with, you know, solving algebraic equations, proportions and the like, I'm going to leave the direct links to my um, algebra course. As a matter of fact, I'll leave the direct link to all direct links to all my main courses in the description below. But this is one of these little tiny details that oftentimes uh, trip students up. You know, it's all the difference between getting the right answer and the wrong answer, right? So it's that old adage, the devil's in the details. And this is an example of, uh, you know, having to pay attention when you do mathematics. Okay, so hopefully this little video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.